Hi, my name is Calvin Michaud. I'm a certified trainer here at Wolfram. Today we're going to talk about Mathematic Online and specifically collaboration and sharing. So with collaboration and sharing, there are two typical workflows when you share projects. The first is what we call deployments, and that's meant for sharing a final project where you are embedding mouse-driven applications into an existing web page, or there are web forms uh, that have a Wolfram language program behind them, or this can be sharing an entire notebook, so something that has text and formulas and graphics, but it also has mouse-driven uh, live applications happening uh, all within a browser. Sharing notebooks is slightly different, so that's typically with other Mathematica Online users, and those are editable Wolfram notebooks. So the idea is that you designate specific viewers or collaborators, uh, and then they can jump in and append to your work or just change what you have. Uh, it's very useful for courseware. It's very useful for research teams where people are building up different pieces of code or different pieces of an algorithm. Um, and in general, the workflow is useful uh, for myself as a speaker here. So if you are giving a talk in Mathematica or you want to use Wolfram Notebooks, uh, I'm giving this talk entirely in Mathematica Online. So if you're at a conference and you don't know whether that machine has Mathematica or not, you can log into Mathematica Online and have a fully editable notebook at your disposal to show real calculations uh, in front of an audience, very similar to what I'm doing today. But in either case, uh, sharing, and work, uh, sharing and collaboration boils down to how you get the work out to other people, and so that's what we're going to focus on today. Deployments first, and then sharing full notebooks. So let's start with a simple model uh, to help illustrate uh, deployments. So in this case, we're going to start with a simple PNG image and import that, and then build a very simple image processing application where we blur this logo, or we can create a manipulate to adjust the amount of blur that's happening. So more blur or less blur, uh, depending on what you want the application to do. So once we have our simple application, we can now turn that into a deployment. Uh, so starting with this manipulate, this works in browser here in My Mathematic Online, uh, but we can use the function cloud deploy to then make that transition to a deployment. Cloud deploy is doing a bunch of different things all at once. It copies my program here, a very simple program, one line program. It copies it to Wolfram servers, so there's some hosting going on. Uh, it returns a URL, and then it links up my program to a Mathematica kernel or a Wolfram language kernel that lives on Wolfram servers to then enable computation uh, as well to anyone you send this to. I've also set this where permissions go to public, where I can send this to anyone, and whether they have Mathematica or Wolfram language or whatever technology they do or don't have, they can click on this URL and they can run this application uh, just like I do here. So it comes up as wolframcloud.com slash objects, and then I get my own URL, and then I can move this slider and blur the uh, logo just as I was doing before. Uh, but this is all happening uh, on the, in the cloud. So I'm not running Mathematica on this machine at all right now. Uh, the computation is happening on Wolfram servers, uh, and there's no plugin that's needed and no installation that's needed. So it's a really easy way to share uh, finished projects in a nice, clean, web-based format. So once you have models in a web browser, that opens up a lot of different possibilities, uh, one being just to use this in courseware. Course management systems or learning management systems are very popular. Uh, that houses things like videos and assignments and uh, due dates and things like that. It's an all-in-one uh, spot for the course. Uh, it's also usually fairly straightforward to embed a web page, uh, and a lot of times the course management system gives you a choice where you can put in a URL, and it will either embed in the page or open up in a new tab, or you can choose. Uh, in this case, I have it embedded in the page, but having these deployments and having these things in browser, it, it helps unify this experience for students where they can just click on this and go and, and uh, use this web application but it's all in one place. They don't have to leave the browser. Same idea with iPhone or mobile. So because this is web-based, it looks and acts and feels exactly the same uh, in a browser on a phone or in a browser on a tablet. 
So whether it's an iPhone or iPad, uh, the look is the same. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about if you're sharing a uh, finished application, what sort of hardware are they going to use to look at your finished application? Uh, many people check their email on phone these days or tablets or a computer or all of the above. So in any case, they can click on this URL and have exactly the same experience and you know exactly uh, what they're going to see. So taking this idea a bit uh, more general, so rather than using a manipulate and having one specific hard-coded image where we are blurring that, uh, it's also very straightforward to make web forms. So it's using the same cloud deploy function, but we're switching to a function called form page here, where we can upload an image uh, and then apply that blur, or we can upload an image and also specify how much blur we want. So in this case, this web form, I'm going to drag and drop an image from off the screen here, uh, but I can just put that PNG file in here and then specify uh, we want a decent amount of blur here. And then we run that and we get the image back. So again, this is all living on Wolfram servers. It's a URL that you can send to anyone. They can upload their own image and uh, work with this application uh, regardless of, of whether they have Mathematica or any plugin or any installation whatsoever on that machine. So it's very portable, very convenient. Web forms are also fairly flexible. So instead of just uploading one image uh, or uploading different images and blurring those, well, I mean, so far I've talked only about image processing applications. Here I'm going to switch it up and upload a CSV file and actually create a histogram. So I want to demonstrate that it's not just image processing applications that are possible here. If we upload the CSV, it creates a nice histogram for us uh, and colors that nicely. And you can mouse over these values and see the actual values as well. So you get some interactivity with the graphics. Uh, but again, it's a really nice convenient way to have a, a form that does some uh, data processing as well as image processing. So I'm going to broaden this a little bit more still. So we're going to switch back to image processing, but I'm going to compare and contrast a typical workflow in a notebook versus a deployment. Uh, this example is from a blog that one of our image processing developers made, uh, Shadi. Uh, the idea is to start with an image. So this is a slide of some cells, and we want to count how many cells are in this slide. Um, and, and basically, that's it. So uh, in a real-world setting, uh, you might give this to a lab tech where they've got a hundred of these slides per day. Maybe they don't want to sit down and make a, a Wolfram language program for themselves, but if you can hand them an application that just automatically counts these cells and it fires through and is very customized for them, uh, that's, a, that's a great fit for a Wolfram language uh, project and program. So if they've got Mathematica, they can go through this notebook and put in their own image. Uh, we can do some segmentation analysis color different regions, different colors. So any region that's a different quantity of pixel values gets a different unique color. We can use graphic primitives to actually draw a circle around this and number these. So now we can see this cell is not being counted, this cell is being counted. We can see what the program is really doing. And then we can do some statistics too. So we can do a histogram to see common pixel values. There's some outliers at the top here. Um, looks like some outliers below. So there's something to be learned there, but this is a typical notebook workflow where you build up a calculation bit by bit. There can be some text, there can be some explanation, but it's a good uh, narrative flow to the calculation. Now, if I wanted to change this to a deployment, I can take pretty much exactly the same code that I had in the uh, slide before uh, with some very minor tweaks, but we're going to wrap uh, cloud deploy and form function around this where it can be any PNG image, and then we're going to adjust the bins of the histogram as well. So when I click on this, this is a web form just like what we were looking at before. And off the screen, I will drag this uh, PNG image. I'll give the uh, 30 for the number of bins for the histogram, so how, what granularity of the pixels we want to look at. And so um, all while I've been talking here, so what the web form did is it took the PNG file that I put in the web form. It ran my 10 or dozen lines of code. It created this nice image. It created this nice histogram. And then all in browser, we've got this nice grid uh, of images as the output. So again, if the, if the audience here 
doesn't know Wolfram language, doesn't, uh, that's not the focus of their project. They just want to get some results. Uh, they've got a lot of these images and they just want to count them. So this is a really handy, really neat way to get this finished application to them. And it's doing something real world. It's not a, a one line blur. It's a, it's a better real world application to look at. So far, we've talked about deployments where the deployment lives as a web application where uh, you are uploading something to the cloud, uh, but it lives as a website. So in addition to web forms, you can also uh, deploy content as an instant API. So in this case, we're still using cloud deploy, but instead of the, f uh, the function form function or form page, we're using API function. So in this case, the API has one input, which is an integer, and then it squares the integer. So we can test this API very quickly here just by doing question mark x equals 5 and confirm that that works. Uh, but what is more useful is to use uh, this function embed code. So when you have an API, you might want to embed the Wolfram language code into a larger project that is mostly written in a different language. So in this case, if we use the argument Java, this gives you an entire wrapper in Java with the core of this being this URL for the uh, Wolfram language API, but it gives you a full wrapper just to plop into your Java code, and then you can mix and match and use the best of our language uh, right within the existing code that you have. In addition to Java, we support a lot of different languages. Uh, maybe you would want to do something with R or Perl or C or um, JavaScript or Swift. So whether it's app development or websites or lower level things or statistical things or whatever uh, specific language that you're using, you can broaden the application quite a bit by referencing uh, Wolfram language code as an API and then just using this wrapper uh, to have some nice code to put right in your existing code in another language and then uh, inject our language in your project. Okay, so that leads us to deploying full notebooks. Um, I mentioned before that you can deploy uh, a complete notebook, and this is a good example. So this is a deployment where there's nice text and there's nice discussion. Uh, there are some nice graphs, uh, but there's also some uh, application, some mouse-driven applications in the middle where we can increase or decrease the uh, sampling of random real points and rerun this. Uh, but in contrast to something like a web form or an API where it's a very specific example, a very specific thing that you're doing, uh, sharing this notebook includes all the nice discussion and it includes the nice uh, explanation that you have. So there are plenty of cases where uh, deploying and sharing a full notebook to people is much, much more useful than a very specific API or web form. Uh, the process to do this is very simple. If you're starting from local Mathematica, you can save to Wolfram Cloud. And then when you're, when you're in Wolfram Cloud, you can click on the Publish drop-down menu. And uh, this gives you the URL to share, just like what I had before. Uh, in newer versions of Mathematica, you can publish also uh, within the desktop product itself. Uh, so this is a good way uh, to publish notebooks where all of the nice text and uh, titles and all the stuff that you've built up in the notebook is preserved uh, and you can share the whole thing with people. So making the transition now, if we want to jump to full and editable notebooks, collaboration and sharing takes on a, a different form. So instead of sharing a URL where it's open to anyone, it's something that anyone can use, um, in this case, you want to have more fine-grained control over who can use it uh, who you want to see it. Maybe you want them to see it, but not edit. Uh, but in this case, you're sharing with other people that have Mathematica. So collaboration boils down to creating uh, what we call a permissions group. So in this case, I'm going to create a group uh, based on Wolfram IDs, so logins for Mathematica online. And then I'm going to go through the process of, of giving them access to some of my work. So if you've got a work group with a lot of people, or especially if you're teaching a class and you have a class roster of uh, 100, 200, 300 people, you don't want to keep typing in email addresses over and over and over again. 
And in the Share drop-down menu, just as the Publish drop-down menu is good for that, the Share drop-down menu, you can share a specific notebook with other users just by typing in their email address. This is very handy uh, when it's one or two people and it's a quick share. Um, this Create Permissions group does the same thing, but it's much better for larger groups. So that's the big advantage here. So I'm going to create a permissions group called Calvin Collab. There are two people in it, Calvin M, Calvin underscore Misho. And again, the point of this would be, uh, this would be 50 uh, emails long. Uh, but then we can store this. It is stored in the cloud. So the permissions group is stored uh, as Calvin Collab. And then we can start to take specific file names like this optical illusion notebook. And we can use set options to uh, to give the permissions group certain access to that notebook. So in this case, I'm giving the permissions group both read and write access. So when they open this up, they are writing in the exact same notebook that I am. So if we're both writing three different sections of the same notebook, um, then that would be a great way to append to the same notebook. In some cases, you do not want to do that. So in some cases, uh, courseware being the best example, you would want to give an assignment to students, but you don't want them uh, editing your copy. You want them to have their own copy, and each of the 100 students will need their own copy to, com to complete the assignment. So in this case, you're giving them read access to the main notebook, so this Blur logo notebook. They get the URL, they can read it, but this auto copy true option forces them to make their own copy in their own Mathematica Online account, and then at that point, it is independent of your original notebook, meaning that each of the 100 students have their own copy. They can complete the assignment. They can share it back to you as the instructor, and you can grade it or view it or uh, whatever you want the endpoint of that to be. But this is a good way to run courseware, where there's a large class and you want to give everyone a starting point, and then they write some code or they do a project or they do something uh, in response to your uh, explanation or, or your instructions. Okay, so uh, that's how you create groups, and that's how you give people access to notebooks. Uh, the other layer to this is the actual communication. So uh, Cloud Share, um, so Set Options, the thing that I was doing in the last uh, slide, it does not give any notification to the people receiving the share. Uh, Cloud Share does, so we can do the exact same process where we take a notebook and we share, and then they get an email uh, that notifies them of the share, which I have here in the next slide. Yeah, so when you run Cloud Share, they get an email that says, Kelvin Misha just shared this with you. Click here to view this file. Uh, and so that would be a good uh, catch-all way to share things with people and let them know that they have access. Uh, if you want to get more customized, there are functions like send mail in the language. So if you want to send an email with a URL uh, that has a due date, it has some specific instructions, uh, using set options, which is silent uh, when it shares, and then using send mail to have the instructions in the URL, that would be the best way to do that. So there are lots of twists and turns here and a lot of options to share and control the communication, which oftentimes is, is very, very important. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, there's a lot of new uh, avenues for sharing that are opened up with Mathematica Online and with having this content in browser. Uh, and specifically, it's a great complement to Desktop Mathematica. So if you are a desktop user, Mathematica Online will be something that you find a great complement to what you're doing now. Uh, less of a or re relationship, more of an and relationship. Um, there are many organizations now, uh, universities that have site licenses for Mathematica Online, or organizations that have a service level that includes Mathematica Online. So increasingly, the default licensing options or the typical licensing options, they include Mathematica Online. Uh, so if you're ready to start jumping in and you want to test Mathematica Online, drop me a line if you want. If you don't know whether you have access to Mathematica Online, feel free to send me email. I'll either answer or get you in touch with the right person to, to give you the answer for that. But hope this is a good jumping off point, and I hope this will uh, be a good start for experimentation. Thank you.